Welcome to In the Lighthouse, your safe harbor from the storm, with your host, the Lighthouse Keeper, Daphne Collins. Hello, and welcome to In the Lighthouse, your safe harbor from the storm. Brought to you by Carry the Light Ministries. I'm Daphne Collins, your Lighthouse Keeper. I hope you enjoyed Parts 1 and 2 of Fortified Marriages and my talk with Chris and Carmen Garner. Today, I'm joined by my fellow ministry partner and friend, Melissa Sines, and she's brought her husband, Jimmy, along to participate in our discussion. This episode is entitled, Fortified Marriages, The Commentary, and Melissa and Jimmy will share their thoughts about what they learned from Chris and Carmen's time here in the Lighthouse. Plus, I will comment from a single person's perspective. Melissa and Jimmy have been married for 31 years, and as you will hear directly from them, they needed to learn much about each other in order to understand how to cultivate and maintain their own garden of a marriage. If you are married and have been looking for guidance to overcome the common obstacles you and countless others experience daily in their marriages, consider visiting Chris and Carmen's website, www.fortifiedmarriages.com, and ordering their manual, Fortified Marriages, How to Build and Maintain a Strong Marriage and Family. I pray that you and your spouse will commit your whole being to the work that it takes to restore your garden to the intended beauty that is purposed by God. Okay, let's get started. One person can change a marriage by doing something different. And so it's applying, not doing what everybody else has said works, not doing what your parents did. The other statistic is the experts say finances is the number one reason for divorce. In 30 years of counseling, we disagree. We've had couples arguing over finances, but that wasn't the problem. The problem is selfishness. Our 30 years of counseling, unmet needs is the number one reason for divorce. Even when We've counseled couples through infidelity. We've counseled them through all sorts of problems, but it's getting them to understand their differences, start living that out, and then start loving their spouse as God's called them to love their spouse. When it comes to our relationships with one another, we enter into our own understanding based on who we are and our past experiences. God created us for relationships, so it is inevitable that we will have conflict because we are fallen creatures. But we must not be discouraged. It is important that we recognize our vulnerability to attacks. The Apostle Peter recommends that we be sober-minded, be watchful, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. In order to maintain the garden of our marriage, as described by Chris and Carmen Garner, work is required. Moreover, the walls of your marital garden are to be reinforced against any storms that are sure to come. The apostle continues by recommending the defensive stance couples are to take. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that together, as one flesh, you can withstand the flaming arrows of the enemy. If you are divided against one another, you are rendered vulnerable to attack. The couple devoted to living in a Christ-centered marriage is aware of their identity in Christ and with one another. 
They see the benefit of understanding their individual love language and the importance of communicating with their spouse with selfless regard. But, as we have learned, if we become distracted by the concerns of life and neglect the necessary time to cultivate our garden, the weeds and thorns will overtake and choke the tender blossoms. We'll now hear from a couple who listened to parts one and two of Fortified Marriages and recalled their experiences in their 31 years together. It's so good to be back with you again, Melissa. We have our host of Eternal Treasures, Melissa Signs, the Lady with the Lamp, and this time she has with her her husband, Jimmy Signs. Welcome, Jimmy. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here. And Melissa, it's so good to see you again. It's great to be here again, Daphne. I really enjoyed these episodes of Fortified Marriages from Chris and Carmen Garner. What did you guys think of it? I really, truly got a lot out of it. It was just very informative, mm -hmm. so biblically based. I love everything that they've implemented and what they've done to share with other couples is just so inspiring. Yes, exactly. I agree. What about you, Jimmy? What did you think? Well, it just brought back a lot of mishaps that I did in my lifetime mm -hmm. and through my marriage. And with them speaking, it just reflected a lot right. on me, too, as far as being married and right. all the wrongdoing I did and how to go about correcting everything. So right. it was good. Oh, that's great. I was hoping that we'd be able to do this commentary together again, Melissa, because when I was listening back to these episodes, I thought about it from now from a single person's perspective, but I definitely wanted to get the perspectives together, a married couple and then myself. So I'm so glad this worked out for us to get together and be able to do this. Me too. I think it'll be great insight for our listeners and I'm looking forward to it. I know that you guys are planning on getting the manual, Fortified Marriages. It's How to Build and Maintain a Strong Marriage and Family, written by Chris Garner. And I mean to tell you, these chapters are amazing. They're well put together, and it's going to be a very useful resource for anyone, whether you're single or married. What we wanted to do today was really just kind of go over what we heard from the two episodes and point out some of the things that really stood out for us. At least for me, I looked at it in the beginning initially on the identity. And I know this was from the second episode where they were speaking of a Christ-centered versus a Christian marriage. And there's a difference between the two of them because if it's Christ-centered, these are Christians who put Jesus first in their lives and everything they do, as you said, it's biblically based versus two Christians being married because you don't know that level of their Christian walk. And if you recall in the first episode, they did mention that they both were new Christians. Mm. They met one another. They came together. And then, you know, you're in love and everything's just great. And, it's, mm. and then you start living life together. Yeah, And they both came with baggage because they were married before. They did not have that biblical foundation of, mm -hmm. how am I going to be able to live as a Christian man? How am I going to be able to live as a Christian woman with who I am? And that's something that they were speaking about because here they were divorced. They did not have their identities in Christ at the time yet, nor did they have an understanding of their own partner. Chris didn't know much about Carmen's walk or how to handle the way they would live together. He just knew how he acted. And it was interesting how he really took us through the way he was and how he changed through the years. Mm -hmm. So there was no true understanding of their differences. Right? Did you see that? You heard that, huh? Mm. Yeah. I did hear that. The identity, our identity in Christ is so critical. Yes. Because when we don't have that, we don't know how to treat others. We don't know how to be in relationships until we know who we truly are in Christ. And mm -hmm. we're walking in that, walking it out and living that out. It's difficult when you're in relationships, marriage, 
or any relationships. Exactly. Like you said, this can be applied to any other relationships, not just marriage. As for myself and my husband, we didn't have the foundation in the home, which I think is so important too. He does later talk about this, about the family and not having parents to be a role model for us. Unfortunately, you know, we both didn't have that in our homes either. We weren't raised in Christian homes. We both came from families that were broken. There was abuse. There was alcoholism. We didn't know how to be married. Right. We never had that example for us with anybody. So here you put two people together who come from totally different upbringings, different backgrounds, different cultures even sometimes, right. and try to make things work. And it's very difficult. It's and what do, you say, what do you say to that, Jimmy? Well, agreeing with Melissa, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't, as Melissa was saying, there was no structure, you know, with church or Christ or even knowing that he existed. Right. But when I met my wife, she was already following Jesus. Yes. Basically, she was God sent. I truly believe now that, she, that the Lord, you know, sent her to me to just show me the way, guide me to let me see that there is a God out there. And she's absolutely right. I was born in a very abusive family where, you know, it was just broken. It was even hard to even think that there was a, a God because with all the heart and the just the hurt and everything yes. that was going on there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was uh, it was pretty hard. It's really something, another thing that they touched on I know that you guys have seen it. You've probably done it yourself, and that's wearing the mask. Mm -hmm. You know, you go into, Jimmy, you said you did not have any prior Christian understanding. You met Melissa. You saw her. What attracted you to her is her faith, mm -hmm. and you just kind of observed her through that time. Eventually, when you're going into a church and you're meeting people and you don't have that foundation, mm -hmm. so guess what's going to come on? The mask. Mm -hmm. I know many times myself through the years wearing the mask, everything's okay. Oh, yeah, I'm just fine. Everybody's fine. Yeah, I love Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then you leave and then the mask comes off. And I will even go further to say that while I was in the workplace, there was a different mask. Mm -hmm. When I was around my family, there was a mask, mm -hmm. depending on who I was close to and who I was not close to. What do you think about that? Well, having a mask, I truly believe I didn't have a mask. I was very transparent. I really didn't care what people thought. So I really didn't have a mask on. And when I was going to church, when I was introduced to, you know, with my wife to go to church, I felt really uncomfortable because I didn't want to pretend. I didn't want to act like I was this godly man. So I never really wore a mask. I basically wore Nikes and just ran away all the time. I just wouldn't step foot in the church because I hear it now, being loving the Lord as much as I do now, I, I hear it all the time is, when is going to be the right time to go to church? We always think we are so bad, we don't belong in church. But we're absolutely wrong. That's when we need to go to church. So, we are the church. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I never wore a mask. I was just a very straightforward person. I confess that I did. Yeah. I did. I would say I did too, of course. And that was very hard for Jimmy, I guess, to understand. Like, how can you go? And, you know, our marriage is horrible right mm -hmm. now. And how are you going to just go? And I'm like, well, I, you know, I need the Lord. I need to be there. I just kind of went through that process and until again it comes once we understand who we are in Christ mm -hmm. and when we really begin to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh and we begin to really mature in our faith and have those deep things rooted inside of us mm -hmm. that we can tear off that mask right we don't have to hide behind that anymore mm -hmm. I later learned much of that because I didn't fully understand a lot of these concepts that Chris and Carmen spoke about. Mm -hmm. I was married before for a while, had two children and bringing them up. And But I was Catholic, as you know, and it's a total different approach to 
faith. Mm-hmm. And for me, that was religion. Right. I was used to wearing a mask mm-hmm. because I was wearing a mask of religion right. and works. And I have to do this and I have to do that. Otherwise, I feel guilty. Yeah. And I didn't understand how much bondage one could be in if you don't fully understand that Jesus is the way. Mm. He's the one that sets you free from that bondage because you really can't do anything to get to heaven. Mm. These are the things that I needed to understand and learn later. And I never went to marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. I did go to counseling because my marriage stressed me out so terribly. Mm. But I learned about myself, it would have been so wonderful to have a book like this or have a resource to go to at the time. I can remember reading the books like Boundaries, Mm -hmm. but at that time, it was not from a Christian perspective. It was secular, but it helped me. Mm -hmm. And that was my first exposure into understanding it from a biblical perspective mm. right? with my Catholic understanding, if that mm-hmm. makes any sense to you. Yeah. You just have to want it. It's just so hard, you know, when you don't have Jesus in your life. Yes. And it's so hard to just to surrender and let it go and just have that faith, you know, and just be like, let God handle it. It's free. Yeah, it's and free. You, you, I mean, you really don't know it. Mm -hmm. until when the gospel message is shared. And then for me, it took over a period of time. You know, not everyone right away. (laughs) Oh, yeah, look, line and sink or I'm in it. You know, the seeds were sown. The Lord, he was drawing me to him. And it's the most wonderful thing. And then you wake up one morning and you realize the gift of salvation Mm -hmm. and what it really truly means to you Mm -hmm. and understanding who you are in Christ. That's the part. So the masks started coming off then. (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And like Chris was saying about the marriage counseling, you know, he didn't, Carmen wanted to go to counseling. Chris didn't. So typical. Typical. Typical for a man. I hear that so many times where the man doesn't want to participate. And she said she was going to still go anyway. So I thought that was great that he allowed her to go anyways and that she went ahead and pursued that. Eventually, he mentioned that he had a friend (laughs) that pointed in his face and said, you are not leaving. And he said he knew that was the Lord. And I'm so grateful for friends that do that for us. Yes, exactly. That can tell us, no, don't leave. Don't Don't give up. Don't do this. Yes. Because... That man helped him to see things from a whole nother perspective. And then the Lord had a whole different plan for them. So true. I was laughing at how Chris described it too. For him, it was, I didn't want her telling him things about me. I wanted to tell him myself from my perspective. So no matter how he got there, he still still Mm -hmm. got there. And it changed him Mm -hmm. altogether. And I love that part, how he... He opened up and he saw it from, yeah. from how he changed. It was excellent. Yeah. 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 Just how he just surrendered and just said, okay, you know what? I'm going to go to counseling. He's just an awesome person to do that because we tried that. Right. And I was that man. I don't need counseling. And when I decided, okay, well, let's, let's give it a shot. I already went in there with a negative attitude. And you go in with that type of attitude, it's not going to work out. It's just not going to work out. You're going to put your Nikes on again and start (laughs) running the opposite way. Well, it's interesting because what you're saying is when he made the analogy of the garden. Mm, Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that was a beautiful analogy. I never thought of it, never heard of it described in this way. Yes. And it's so true Mm -hmm. because. Things don't happen overnight. They don't. You don't feel like you're going to leave your husband overnight. Right. Mm. It's over a period of time of being neglectful in the marriage, of not communicating, of, you know, not meeting each other's needs. Like he was saying, not putting your spouse before myself. Yeah. All these things that start to happen. And then you just feel like overwhelmed by a point where you're just done. Well, you just feel like you're done. We had a lot of weeks. Oh, yeah. A lot of weeds, right? Yeah. A lot of weeds. Yeah. We, unfortunately, we did not take the time to do all these things. You know, Jimmy and I, we got married. We had children right away. We raised four children. And we really didn't take the time to 
invest in our marriage. To be honest, we were just so busy working, mm-hmm. trying to provide for our family. And yeah. we even worked opposite shifts to make things work. You know, we never really had time for each other. It's by the grace of God that he kept us together, mm-hmm. to be honest. Praise God. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. And, and just to let the audience know, three of them we had together, and then I had a child at a younger age. You know, Melissa accepted him as her own and, you know, just never turned back. I was not ever married. I just was in a relationship that didn't work out. So you came together as a blended family in the mm-hmm. beginning, started off with a child, mm-hmm. and then had three children together. Well, well Nick came later, actually. Our yeah. son came later. With the lifestyle that I had, mom and, well, yeah, mom and I, you know, we separated. She started getting involved with drugs and, you know, started doing things that I didn't really agree with. So we parted ways. She went her way. I went mine. And she took my son. And she ran away from me. She wouldn't keep in touch. She wouldn't answer my phone calls. And all this time, I just tried to stay in touch with my son. And she was just always doing the things that were not right, that a mother should be doing. She was totally not doing that. Okay. So, but the two of you, obviously she went on and you both went your separate ways. Mm -hmm. You and Melissa got married. Mm Mm-hmm. But you wanted your son. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she gave up her rights as a mother after a while. So Melissa and I talked about it before he came to our home. We talked about it, and she was so loving. You could tell it was just like a Christian woman. And again, I was not a Christian man. You know, I was not a godly man. But her heart was just so loving, you know, even though it was not her child. And we talked about it, and she goes, let's bring him home. And I'm like, really? And she goes, yeah, let's just bring him home. And ever since day one, she's always said, my son. And he's always called her mom, never Melissa, always mom. And that was a great thing. It was just awesome seeing that too. But again, I was not a man of God, and I didn't see these things until later in life. And we'll get that later on. Well, another thing that they did speak about, and maybe you guys could speak on this too, and that's the praying together. Obviously, you were looking and seeking godly counsel, Mm -hmm. but Jimmy didn't really want to. So, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that they really counsel Chris and Carmen is asking couples, well, do the two of you pray with one another? Do you pray together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, we don't. Not enough. I wouldn't say we don't, we've been better about it, Mm. especially within the past, I would say a couple of years that we've really been able to bond more and really implement some more biblical scriptures into our marriage and into our life. We have been more intentional about praying together, right? but it was definitely lacking in the past. And that was part of the problem. Yeah, the garden was, like Jimmy said, neglected. Weeds overgrowing everything. Yeah, Yeah, way overgrown. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. over our heads. (laughs) They were pretty big. Yeah, but like I said, it takes a lot of intentionality. You have to really apply these things every single day. Like he was saying, you can't just do it once and think, oh, it's going to grow by itself. No, it doesn't. It doesn't happen that way. You have to continuously go back. You have to reflect on things. You have to apologize, you know, ask for forgiveness. You have to pray together. You have to spend time together. Like mm-hmm. he said, um, I remember him saying that him and Carmen were working, working, working. And she's mm-hmm. like, can we spend some time yeah. together? We got to get together because you start to lose that connection. Yeah. That's so true. And we started so young. Yes. And so quickly that our priority were our kids. And we really didn't have priority in our marriage. It just became so overwhelming because your full attention was on your kids, making sure they have clothes, food, shelter. You're not getting involved with your wife, with your spouse. You push that off to the side. And, you know, now it's like you're, it's God first, now your wife, and then your kids. That's you know? exactly going back to the... Christ-centered marriage versus two Christians married Mm -hmm. because the children become your priority Mm -hmm. as opposed to Christ first and then one another. Yeah. Ensuring that 
mm-hmm. the two of you yeah. are cared for and that you understand one another. And what did you think about how they were speaking on the identities, how they saw one another, how you would go about with each other? I mean, we took the little test and we mm-hmm. we came up with results. Did it make sense to you? Did it help you to understand how the two of you have been operating with each other, like the way Carmen and Chris were speaking of themselves? Yes, I could totally relate to what they were saying. You know, when you think about somebody who's so different from you, because as you've probably heard from most couples, we're complete opposite. Yes. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. definitely it's challenging. It's so challenging because we have a whole different mindset, a whole different perspective, almost on every single thing you can think of. I mean, he mentioned how they couldn't even agree food. on food. And yeah. that's us That's yeah. all the time. <laughs> yep. So we're constantly, but like he said, you know, it's about putting your spouse's needs first. You compromise, you know, you come to a middle decision and decide what's going to be best, you know, and whatever, if it's food, obviously, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Honestly, I usually am more um, willing to just say, let's go wherever. <laughs> yes. And not really mm. mess Makes with that too crazy. Much. Just- yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> you know, I recently learned that it's just about embracing the differences. Right. Because Jimmy has helped me in so many ways with things that I didn't have instilled in myself. One of them was boundaries. Okay. He is so good at boundaries and really um, discerning different things, you know, and people and situations that I just couldn't see. I, you know, have allowed him to speak into my life about those things. It's just changed my perspective on things now. It's helped me to grow in those areas where I was weak. And, you know, there's things that I know I've helped him with. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe being a little softer on a text message or something. (laughs) No, it's true. We're not by any means identical. We're so different. But it's like two negatives. But if you really look at it and you really try, it becomes you guys are... We're like we're meant to be. You're complimentary to yes. one another. Yeah. It, yes. It's like we're meant to be because the stuff that I had struggles in, she helped me out with. Like, don't be so harsh. Stand firm, but do it with love. Let's take a moment for this short break. When we return, we will continue with Fortified Marriages, the commentary with Daphne Collins and Melissa and Jimmy Signs. Many people say they believe in Jesus Christ, but does that mean they are all going to heaven when they die? James says, even the demons believe and they tremble. We know with all certainty that the demons are not in heaven, nor will they go to heaven someday, and yet we are told that they believe. The Bible teaches that simply believing in this sense is not saving faith. The Apostle John tells us in John 1.12 that, Only those who receive Jesus are given the privilege of becoming a child of God, even to those who believe in his name. You see, you must not only believe, but also receive him or appropriate him into your life. That word receive literally means to take hold of or to seize. If someone offered you an ice cold glass of water on a hot day, it would do you absolutely no good to simply believe it was ice water. In order to benefit from it, you have to take hold of it. You have to seize it and consume it into your body to get its refreshment. And so saving faith is receiving or taking hold of Jesus Christ and appropriating him into your life because you believe in him. Beloved, if you believe in Jesus, have you received him and appropriated him into your life? This is Lane Wilder for Carry the Light Ministries, bringing you insights from an elder. Welcome back. We will now continue to the conclusion of Fortified Marriages, the commentary with Daphne Collins, along with Melissa and Jimmy Sines. We serve a God that loves us, still performs miracles every day. And our focus needs to be on God. So many of us 
when we're going through some hard times, we're embarrassed, we're ashamed because things are not going well for us and we're on the verge of divorce. Remember that Satan is a liar and he's out to kill and destroy and we have to do things God's way and not our way. And so my challenge to you, if you're in that situation, is seek help. Well, you helped her with the boundaries. Mm -hmm. Now, you said embracing the differences, and they certainly touched on love languages. Mm -hmm. Do you understand your love languages, and how have you been able to incorporate that in the way you talk to one another, engage one another? For myself, Jimmy's love language is affirmation mm -hmm. and physical touch. I am really bad about this. I'm going to be honest. I am not as good as he probably would hope I am, but I try to give him compliments. It's crazy because more often I usually think things in my head, but I don't always say it out loud to him. So I've been trying to implement more, like saying it, being intentional about saying yes. it out loud. Mm -hmm. If I see like, oh, he got a haircut today. I got to say something. Mm -hmm. So I'll be more intentional about saying it out loud now. But it's still it's still a work in progress. It's not perfect. It's better. Thank you. <laughs> Jimmy, what's Melissa's and how have you been able to? Hers is not touch. It's more of action. It's like take the initiative without me saying something to you, which goes, you know, where your heart's at. It's love your wife as God loves the church. You know, I got to love her like, I, I just got to love her. And when I see things, I got to take the initiative to, instead of waiting for her to tell me to do something, I just got to go up and, and start doing it. And that's, that's her love language is, it's not the touch. It's, it's acts of service. It's act of service. Yeah. That's what it is. It's very interesting because you are both similar to Chris and Carmen. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so this leads to these points where Chris was speaking about that particular area when the challenge was placed upon him when Carmen broke her ankle. Yes. Mm. And I wanted to know, you know, as a man similar to Chris, Jimmy, what did you think about that? And how does that relate to you and Melissa? Well, with Chris, when I was hearing him say that, it was just it, it like hit home with me. My wife, Melissa, she's broke her ankle. I had to help her out with that. And just recently with the COVID, we were both down and out. And it was so awesome because we're both sick with COVID. But it also humbled me because I was able to be there for her and to cook for her and to do the things that I didn't do before. It just humbled me to the point where it's like, okay, I need her and she needs me. There's nobody else in between, you know? Right, because you're both empty nesters. Yeah. And you're both at home together, and you get to enjoy what you didn't enjoy in the early, right. early years oh, yeah. because you had small children. Yeah. But, you know, when Chris was speaking about that kind of old way of thinking, that old 1950s type of household, I come home from work, my food's already there, you know, oh, wife's... Yeah wearing a dress and pearls and right. life is mm. great. Yeah. And that's TV. That's I Love Lucy. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, okay, let's look at reality as it is. Oh. Mm. And so you're speaking of reality as it is. And I want to really look at it from the single person's perspective mm. and kind of take it from that perspective. If you are single and waiting to be married, I was married. I'm not married, I'm single, but that's by choice. And I'm grateful to God in my singleness, but I have such a respect and I love marriage. I love to see and hear from married couples and the things, I just encourage it. And I encourage anyone who seeks to be married to always be prepared oh, yeah. to understand who they are first right. in Christ so that when they enter into that relationship that leads to marriage, that they're not bringing with them their drama from whatever else they may have had in their life, mm -hmm. and that they're yoked with someone 
who is similar, they're not going to be exactly the same as you guys have already identified. Your love language is different. Right. Your identities are different. You complement one another by the th challenges that you've faced mm -hmm. together and before that. But if you're single and you want to get married, you would also benefit, as I did, from this, from many of the concepts that are written about in this book, because it's about relationship and how to build mm -hmm. a strong marriage and a family. And it really does start with your identity, who you are in Christ, mm -hmm. and how you can start weeding your garden and get used to doing it. Like mm -hmm. you said, Melissa, prayer every, you know, pray, mm -hmm. being God's word. Right. Ensure that you have that as a discipline, because I will tell you, when I fail to continue in that fashion, things start happening to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't feel right. I feel odd. Mm -hmm. The enemy comes at you. Oh, yeah. Real quick. Really oh, yeah. quickly. You're like, okay, so what have I done wrong? Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. I neglected my time alone with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I become a target right. for the enemy to attack. I'm bait. And mm -hmm. now you're walking around in the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yes, oh, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, you know, through what I've learned is that when my marriage starts to go sideways, it just seems us men, we feel like we have to blame our wives. But you got to look at yourself and be like, what am I doing wrong? Like, am I staying in the Word of God? Because once you get off that path, you're the one that starts changing, even though your wife is being committed and staying true to God. And once that person, and I'm speaking for myself, once I start not reading the Word, just meditating on it, and just doing what God has called me to do, I stop doing that, I notice that my attitude starts to change. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, well, it's my wife, but it's me, you know, because you're not staying focused on Christ. So your demeanor starts to change. And I've noticed that. And I was told a couple of times is don't blame your wife for everything. Look at yourself and see what you could correct. And I start doing that a lot. That's great, Jimmy. I'm glad you brought that up. I really am. Yeah, that that was something, I'm sorry, that was something sure. that Chris had mentioned. He said not to isolate ourselves and to have accountability. And I think that is so important that we have someone we can go to. I personally have somebody that I've been going to for about the past, probably about the past year or so. She is a married woman, been married for many, many years, and I can go to her for accountability. And there's been times where I've shared a situation with her and, you know, she tells me, she tells me the truth. I've said, you know, this is what happened. What do you think? What is your take on this, your perspective? And she'll be like, well, I think you need to do what Jimmy said or, you know, whatever it may be. And I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> okay. you know, it's not always the answer I want, but she's very honest and I can go to her for anything, accountability and no that she's going to give me the truth according to what God's word says, not to how I feel, because we're not going by feelings, just like Chris mentioned that. Right. Yeah. It's not about feelings. It's about living out the life. It's love is an action and it's a commitment. It is a commitment. That's something that they spoke on. And that is marriage being a commitment and an investment of a lifelong relationship mm -hmm. as spouses. When you stop and you think about that, Jimmy, if you would, how do you speak to other men concerning your thoughts as a man on the commitment of marriage? It's not just something that you say, today I love her, tomorrow I'm not going to love her. No, you know, it's, man, it, it's a huge commitment. I mean, it's man just changed me in so many different ways as far as where I was and where I am now as far as being married. And I don't even know how to explain it. It's just a huge commitment to, you know, wanting to do things for your spouse and not for yourself. Well, you have sons. Yeah. One is married, one is about to be married. Mm -hmm. And... So if you were to give advice to the one that is about to be married, entering into that 
institution. Mm -hmm. It's an investment of everything as a man. Mm -hmm. And when you say, love her like Christ loved the church mm. and gave himself up to her, everything and all that you are, that's selfless. That's giving everything. You don't come first. She comes first. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I want to know what your thoughts are on that. As a father to a son, what would you say? Uh, I would just basically, you know, I've told my kids before is that just love them the way you want to be loved and, and just treat them like they're gold, you know, just precious, very delicate person, you know, and not to be like me as I was growing up because I was not a great example until, I, you know, I surrendered to God and stuff like that. And the Lord started changing me and molding me. And when you allow that in your life, your children see that and they see the change within me, how the Lord has just molded me into a new creation and how God could just change someone as terrible as I was. I think that speaks out more than words as far as trying to tell your children how to be. But if you could be the person that God has called you out to be, I think that's just a motivation for your, because your children look at you, no matter if they're two years old or 40 years old, they're always going to look at you to see how the way you react to your mom or how you're going to react to a spouse or even to a different uh, situation. When you have God in your life, you don't react like worldly. You know, you react in a whole different way. I have even had my kids tell me, like, Dad, you've changed so much. And that's so inspiring. And it's like, God is good. If God could change me, I'm sure he could change everybody. And I know he can. It's not even the question mark in my life anymore. Melissa, what would you say to a young woman who is considering marriage and answering that? Where should she be in her thinking before she goes down that aisle? So one of my favorite scriptures that I think can apply to marriage for sure in any relationship is Philippians 2.3. And it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, consider others more significant than yourself. Yes. Again, it's that selfless love that you love that person more than yourself, more than anything, of course, not more than God. But you put them first. You mm -hmm. put their needs above yours. The word submission was a really harsh word for me growing up. You know, I didn't, like Chris and, and um, Carmen had mentioned in their podcast, they went to the counseling and they said, oh, love your spouse like Jesus loves the church and you submit to your husband. And that was it. And it was like, but what does that look like? Right. Yeah. How do you put that into action? Nobody gave us the tools or anything for that. So. That word was always kind of like, ooh, submission. You know, it just sounded kind of scary, especially being a woman that was very independent and wanting control of things. It was just not, didn't sound good to me at all. So I would tell my daughter or somebody that was going to be getting married that ultimately we got to put God first, of course, because when our identity again is in him then we can walk in the spirit in our marriage in any other relationship. We will be selfless. I would apply that scripture and I would also encourage her to be respectful towards her husband at all times. Carmen mentioned, you know, it's respect, period. That's what we're supposed to do. And it's not always easy. It is challenging, but that's what God calls us to do when we're doing that we're pleasing the Lord ultimately and we're honoring him in our marriage. And that's the ultimate goal. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I would agree with both with what you've both said and adding to that, really going back to prayer. Mm -hmm. I yeah. learned after the fact, because none of us wants to be in that position of divorce. Mm -hmm. I did. And had I known then what I know now, I know how important it is to have prayer be part of your regular mm -hmm. discipline. Seek the Lord like Jesus did. Right. Jesus sought his father and went off alone to be with him, mm -hmm. to speak to him and talk to him about everything. 
and get that wisdom that you yes. need in order to make it through the relationships that you deal with on a daily basis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. And for me, like the word, you know, was it's a commitment. Again, it's a commitment. Oh, yeah. So the D word was never a thought in my mind. Yes. I always said I'm never I don't ever want to be divorced. You know, I already went into the marriage thinking that. And there were times where, you know, it could have gotten really close. But I personally, I never threatened that. I never said that. I Good. did what I could. I always sought the Lord, went to counseling, tried to do whatever I could, no matter how hard it got. I mean, Jimmy and I did separate at one point for a few months. Several um, months. Yeah, for, you know, some things that happened. Mm -hmm. But the Lord brought us back together. And we just chose that we're not going to go that way. I My mom was divorced two times. And Jimmy's mom was divorced two, two or three two times. Or three times. Yeah. So we so just you had made that, that decision yeah. Yeah, yeah. ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But that, how's your garden now? Oh, it's awesome. I think it's awesome. <laughs> Our garden <laughs> is flourishing. Not with That's weeds, wonderful. Though. That's yeah. wonderful. I am so glad that we had a chance to talk about this. And I encourage anyone to take a look in our show notes for Chris and Carmen's book, how to build and maintain a strong marriage and family. And that's Fortified Marriages. It's a manual and workbook combination together. And you'll see information, picture of Jimmy and Melissa there, picture of me. And Jimmy has his business. It's Bethel Apparel. So you'll see that out there in the show notes. But thank you so much, guys, for, thank you. for uh, sitting and talking. This was great. Yes. Thank you for having us. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Paul, a single man, in a message to the Ephesians concerning marriage, exhorted them to consider living by the mystery that is the selfless love of Christ for his church. Just as Christ loves and cherishes the church, the husband is to have the same love for his wife. And wives are to respect their husbands to affirm this agape love. I want to thank our guest, Jimmy Sines, for joining Melissa and me here in the Lighthouse for this commentary of the Fortified Marriages episodes. This has been a very good topic for discussion and helpful to anyone seeking to understand their identity in Christ and how to relate to one another, whether married or single. Again, I encourage you to visit Fortified Marriages at www.fortifiedmarriages.com where you can order Chris's book directly from their ministry page. We hope you enjoyed listening to this episode. Of course, we'd love to hear from you by emailing us at thelighthouse at carrythelightministries.com or perhaps leaving us a comment below. Transcripts for this and all future episodes can be found in our show notes please stop by and visit us at The Lighthouse on the web at www.carrythelightministries.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube and hit that like button to give us a boost in the algorithms. I'm your Lighthouse Keeper, Daphne Collins, with Carry the Light Ministries. Until next time, be blessed.